Welcome to another episode of the Camelita Podcast. This is where you learn to live like a champion. On today's episode, I have got the amazing Jacinta Ivy, and I'll tell you a bit about her in a minute. And her take on the world, really, truly championing the cause of people who feel as if they don't fit in and how to acknowledge their brilliance and achieve their dreams. Before we introduce Jacinta, do not forget to subscribe to YouTube so you can hear and learn from all our amazing speakers and guests from across the globe. And again, this is your opportunity to learn. Reach out, send us a quick message, click the links below, and just uh, let us know what we can do to support you on your entrepreneurial journey. This episode, is brought to you by Camelita Inner Circle. This is where you learn to truly build and, and create a global brand from where you are. You learn how to create multiple incomes, how to fast track your success and build a life of your dreams. So don't forget, visit Camelita.com to get all that information. Let's get into today's interview. I am super excited to introduce Jacinta Ivy because I know her story is so mind-blowingly powerful. Started off in, um, in healthcare, decided to launch a, a business of her own uh, in consulting, and then she moved on to conquer the world, literally, through her JacintaIvy.com brand. Today, she's here to share with you what it takes to truly acknowledge who you are, achieve your brilliance, and more importantly, to achieve all of your dreams. Let's welcome to the Camelita podcast, Jacinta Ivy. Hello, Camelita. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for some, uh, that wonderful introduction. That yeah, only it's, uh, we've got work to do. We've got work to do today. We've got work to do. Look, I shared a little bit about where you are now, running a multiple six-figure business, creating champions in your own right from other people, and also building a global brand through JustinTivy.com. But it didn't always start off like that. Tell us a bit about your background, where and how you got started. It never started like that. I'm sure, you know, sure nobody starts like that. So um, mine started from my pet with my parents. So my parents are of Jamaican origin and they arrived in the UK in the Windrush era in the response to, you know, come yeah. and help build England post-war. You're really welcome. And so they came, you know, with their little flimsy clothes arriving yeah. from Jamaica when they arrived and saw brick built um, brick buildings, they thought with smoke, they thought they were factories, where indeed they were the houses, of course, that, you know, we all, we all live in. And um, they had, they, they struggled, they arrived to signs that said no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. My mom wanted to be a teacher, my dad wanted to be an engineer, but you know, they met challenges all the way. Wow. Um, my mother applied several times and she was told, my dear, it's best you stay at home and have babies. Wow. So to that, my mom had babies and I was the fifth of those babies um, that she had in succession. And my father went and worked on the bosses because he needed to provide for his family. Yeah. And, and, and so the, yeah. the, the, the struggle, if you like, the challenges began before I was born. So I was born into a household where my parents said to me, if you want to succeed at anything, you're going to have to work twice as hard. Yeah. And, you know, you, you hear that as a young child, Camelita, yeah. and you're playing with your friends and, you know, you're thinking you've got the same opportunities. It doesn't... Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I thought life was rosy and all was well, perhaps up until I was about 16. Little things happened, you know, challenges happened along the way. Um, but you don't realize that you are different until something major happens. And it's funny because speaking to my parents now, they say to me, we tried to book holidays. And when we turned up, we were told, oh, sorry, we're fully booked. 
you can't come in wow, wow, you know, wow. simply because of our color and our race wow. and so some of those challenges and so you you inadvertently start to build resilience you know and yeah. people often say to me where'd you get your resilience and i think well it kind of grew organically and and from and from birth wow. you know and i had challenges like being told you'll never make anything of yourself you're wild and woolly um you're best just perhaps going to work in a shop or do typing that was my career's advice Emily. Wow. But at the back of my so okay, hearing that, what did that how did that make you feel? Because because that is still going on today. How did that make you feel when people said that you couldn't achieve, you couldn't do it, or you should just um, settle for less? Well, when I was that age of sixteen, I couldn't understand. I was confused because even though my mother was turned down for a train teacher training for her teacher training, she did eventually become. Um, a lecturer, a principal lecturer at Oxford Brookes University. My father did take mm -hmm. his master's degree and become an engineer. Mm -hmm. So I saw them throughout the arts. So it was like a little bit confused. Why do they think I can't? And also some steely determination, I think. Mm -hmm. that said, but I mean, I you, you talked about some of those things, just but it, it, a lot of it's still going on today. I mean, you have that whole Black Lives Matter movement and you've got all of these other things now that are sort of highlighting your story, as it were, highlighting what you've been through. But there are people that are not Black and they are still going through or have been through areas where people have said to them, you will amount to nothing or you should only do this. Um, or, or, or teachers in school would have said, you, you know, this is, this is your lot because of this is the area you were born in or this is the family you grew up in or whatever. And black, white, Chinese, Indian, I mean, across the board today, it is exactly the same in terms of people telling you you can't achieve. How, the, what happened next? What, tell us, tell us with that whole scenario, it obviously pushed you into becoming a successful uh, business owner. But tell us the transition from that to being a successful business owner, running your own company across the UK in healthcare. How did that come about? That came about through um, success and failure. And everybody says they don't want to fail, you know, yeah, or you want yeah. to fail. But actually, you learn so much from failure. If you don't fail, you can't succeed. And I truly believe that. Because yeah. when you fail, when you fall down, it's the process of picking yourself up mm -hmm. that you learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really, really important. So I had lots of challenges along the way, Camelita. Mm -hmm. Lots of times when I fell down. And I picked myself up. And I think... One of the key things about me being able to pick myself up was having a sense of who I am. That question about, you know, who am I? Mm. Who am I? And I, I asked that constantly, but my parents instilled pride in us, instilled, you know, that sense of, you know, resilience, the sense of everything and anything is possible if you only believe. And so even through challenges, there were times I fell down so hard but eventually I said to myself, actually, this is who I am. Don't talk about that. Give us one of the times in which you fell down so hard that you thought, my God, am I not gonna, I'm not going to come back from this. The biggest is, so I had a successful career in the NHS. I went through my nursing, midwifery. I became a, one of the very few directors of nursing who looked like me, person of colour. And, and almost, there's almost this sense of, you know, I've made it, I've made it. And then what happened, it kind of started to fall in. I, be, I was bullied, bullied to the point that I was becoming um, psychologically and mentally unwell, um, physically unwell. And for me at that time, for me to survive, this was my survival guide as I needed to exit. And so I left the NHS. So that felt like a huge, you know, falling off a cliff because my career, my aspirations had been to be a director of nursing and I hadn't thought beyond that. You know, that was my destiny. That was my reason for being. That came crashing down overnight. But I had um, 
and, and shining knight, you know, or riding on the horse. Somebody who I knew really well who said, Justin, come and do a bit of work for me, consultancy. Yeah, um, do a bit of work for me. And so I did that yeah. and gradually built a really successful six-figure consultancy. In demand, it was going fantastically well. Um, I, I was beaming and blossoming on, on all of the profits and, and what that brought. Yeah. And then 2008, we had an economic crash. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was, if I thought the other was falling off a cliff, this was falling off a mountain. Wow. I crashed to the point that I had no work. Wow. No money, because I'd not done what you tell us all to do, invest. Mm. I had no no money, no husband. Um, I had... Oh, I tell you something. Somebody that's listening right now, oh my God, are in exactly the same place. No money, no husband, feeling as if they have no hope. Yeah. How did you come out of that? Because they're listening right now and they're struggling. What would you say to them how to come out of that? And just added to that, Kamalita, I'll come to that, was that I ended up on government assistance. We call it a doll. And I remember vividly, I would have to go and sign on once a week. And I would get outside and I would look all around to see if I knew, make sure I didn't know do, do I know anybody? Is anybody going to see me walking into this building? I was so ashamed. Wow, 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 I couldn't wow. tell anybody. I was so ashamed, Carmelita. Mm -hmm. So ashamed. And, and so I felt like I had no hope. I felt like I was just sinking, sinking, sinking. Um, and then you know what got me out of that? What started to get me out of that? I've got two daughters. And I thought, my children cannot see me like this. They cannot see me like this. I have got to do something. And I went back to that, you know, where, where I, I kind of started from my parents about, who am I, Justin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Okay, I haven't got a job. I'm having to go and sign on. But actually, who am I? When I look in the mirror, who do I see? I see a very kind, very caring person. Somebody who has got a lot of knowledge and a lot of skills, who just ended up in a bad situation. Wow. Which doesn't make me a bad person. Doesn't make me incapable. I'm in a bad situation. And so that was for me to kind of acknowledge, at the moment I'm different, I feel different, because my friends, all my friends are directors and senior people. And I'm not earning a bean and I can't even tell them I'm not earning a bean. Wow, 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 wow. So it was really important for me to get back to my identity mm. and to acknowledge who I am. That was the first step. That was the first step because that, that empowered me to kind of say, okay, mm. I've got to get up. I've got to get up. Um, something has happened. I can't let you keep me down. So okay, let, let's talk about that for a minute, right there, just right there, because there are people that are listening and they're in that same boat. What would you say to people? Because obviously you've changed. You, yeah. you started investing and started doing other things to not be in that situation again. What would you say to someone who's listening? How to avoid repeating, making that same mistake of not being in a position where financially they're, 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 they're okay? So I said failure happens before success and it's so important to learn from failure. Mm. So I, what I did was to go back to 20, 2008 and before that. Think, so what happened, Jason? You know, you were successful. What happened? Mm -hmm. And you know what I realized? I hadn't kept ahead of the game mm -hmm. politically in terms of what was happening politically, economically, what was happening in terms of what the what was happening in the sector that I was working with so I, I I just get my head buried and and so what I would say to people is keep your head up look yeah. around 
what's ha what's happening politically, economically, socially, yeah. technologically, globally? What's happening? What are the potential implications? Where are the where are the potential opportunities? What does this mean today, tomorrow, ten years time? And so, for it. I mean, this is what I teach a lot all the time to my clients. I look at trends and I constantly look at what's going to happen. I'm not worried about today. Tell me what's going to happen in 18 months to three to five years. That's what I'm interested in because every 10 years, something happens in the global economy. We know that. So if you don't plan for the next 10 years, you'll be in exactly the same place as you are today. And, and, and you're absolutely right because so many people have found themselves in that situation. Now look, you talked about some of your accomplishments in that you were able to build again, build a, a new business again, um, and have a, a multiple six-figure business. You know, you help so many people um, across the world, and then you launch Ascent Ivy. What would you say is and has been your biggest accomplishment that you can say, "Yes, I did this"? What would you say that is? Apart from my children, <laughs> everybody my, else has the children. No, I, 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 I know, I know. My biggest accomplishment. My biggest accomplishment is my purpose, which is to give to others. Oh. Yeah, the money is secondary. It's to give to others. I have a real passion and desire to see people and organizations grow and flourish and to see people to be the best that they can be. And it's their version of the best, not mine or anybody else's. And that's really important. It's their version of the best that they can be. And, and the analogy I sometimes use is to see them go from yeah. um, a wilted flower or a little bit of a weed to actually to blossom into this okay. beautiful flower. And is, is that something that you do through justintivy.com? Because that's um, another brand that you've got, another business that you've got. Is that, tell us about justintivy.com and what you do under that brand um, to support entrepreneurs, business owners, people as a whole. So um, justintivy.com was born out of my experiences. So to work with people who had been successful, whatever their measure of success is, and that success has been taken away, who feel that they are, there are some people out there, Kamalita, who are so successful, but yet have an incredible imposter syndrome that's still holding them back mm -hmm. um, from that next stage, that is holding them back from um, taking, taking a risk yeah. And particularly within this climate, when people are wanting to be safe and secure, mm. and that that's possibly the, the best thing. And for people who really, um, I've been working with somebody who is incredibly successful at what she does, and yet feels um, under, her perception is just constantly undermined. Um, and she has imposter syndrome. But actually through working with her, it is about building up that confidence and acknowledging her brilliance. Mm -hmm. She has not acknowledged the journey that she has taken and her, and her brilliance. And there are people who are incredibly sex successful out there mm. uh, who have, I call it a wobble, have a wobble, they lack confidence and they're unsure of themselves and it stops them from taking that next step. Yeah, and, and, and you're right, and, and, it's, and if they would acknowledge their brilliance, we, we, let's, let's talk about that because that's the book, um, you know, just acknowledge, acknowledging your brilliance, fulfilling your dreams, um, understanding, you know, just who you are in the midst of things, understanding it's okay to be different. Let's talk about, I know you've got an ebook and you're going to obviously tell people about that ebook today, yes. giving away a couple of chapters for people who want to, you know, get going on that. Tell us about those two and how they can help and support entrepreneurs across the globe. Well, absolutely. So the, the ebook is based on my life and my life's experiences, but some real success principles that I've used in my life and that I use with clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, I've talked about identifying ourselves. Who am I? Because unless we know who we are and unless we can acknowledge our brilliance, we're really not going to move much further. And that's really important. And we've talked a lot about that. But the next question is, and this is a fundamental question, a philosophical question that so many people ask yeah. is, why am I here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why am I here? What's my purpose? Discover your reason why. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, what's your purpose? What are you here for? Well, I want to earn 
this amount of millions, that million. No, 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 no. That's as a result. What is it that you do? What is it that you're called to do that the money will follow? Yeah. And it's really important to really discover what's your reason why? Why do you do what you do? What is it going to bring you? And that's not about what it's going to bring you now. That's long term. Mm -hmm. Because actually, when you stop being able to physically go out there and earn the money, what? what's how are you going to sustain yourself wow so how can people get access to this ebook or the book where, where, where do they go so they'll go to my website jacinthiv.com and into the resources and they will be able to download um, the ebook which is free for the next 10 days um but they'll be able to download the full ebook or chapters of the ebook which will outline Mm -hmm. the um seven steps to acknowledging your brilliance and fulfilling your dreams well you know everybody has dreams and whether we we we, we as a child we have big dreams we want to pass we want a nice car we want a big house we want to travel we have all of those things we got big dreams and somehow after teenagers getting into their 2021 20, 25 and you, you're sort of in the married life and then a lot of these dreams start to to park because you got family and then you got you know bills and all of that and then you sort of think that you're 45 50 and you're thinking whoa what happened to me and yeah it, it is about understanding your passion understanding acknowledging who you are and what you're good at and, and understanding what you're meant to do so that money becomes a byproduct of what you do and not the other way way around well, look before we close off this interview today, I mean, I've learned a lot. I love what you said. Who am I? You know, why am I here? Those, those words are so powerful. And people ask themselves that every single day. Now, what would you say is the biggest way in which you impact the world? The biggest way that I impact the world is my brilliance. That's an interesting question. <laughs> 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 it's an interesting question i know who i am and what my purpose is and my purpose is to give um and my purpose is is to give and to enable people to acknowledge their brilliance and to feel like they have been valued and that they are valued we're in really troubling times. Yeah. And people are stressed. And people want a sense of value and a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I can kind of, you know, that's what I aim in all my, in, in all my interactions, whether people are working with yeah. me, whether it's through social interactions, whatever interaction is, is for somebody to, be, to leave me feeling valued. Oh, I love that. I love that. Feeling valued and so much so today because of the global pandemic because of the global economic situation a lot of people don't feel valued um people losing their jobs don't feel as if they're valued on the job you know husband and wife are, you know going separate ways because they don't feel as if they're valued because of you know stress so much is happening businesses companies directors don't feel as if they're actually giving value with a product brand or service because of people not wanting to buy and it's not that they're the problem it's just that life happens you know and and um people find themselves in this situation um what, what, what uh, before we close off just saying what is your biggest fear in all that you do my biggest fear interestingly i i don't fear crash the crash that i talked about before Mm. Um, because that won't happen yes. and I say it won't happen because of a number of things that won't happen what do I fear? I fear that I won't be of value mm. that's my biggest fear that I won't be of value yes. to the people that I work with to the organisations that I work with yes. yeah actually that's my biggest fear interesting mm. yes mm. wow and, I think that's the, and that's the reason when we know what we don't want when we know that most people don't know what they don't want, they know what they want. Yeah. When we know what we don't want, we, the, the focus is on doing what we need to do in order to not have that. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're absolutely yeah. all right. What is the book? 
that has been, that has given all books you could name to the biggest impact on your life for success today? The book that's been the biggest impact on my life is based on my faith, which is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Any other book you can think of? Any other book? I have a multitude of books that I read. I enjoy Stephen Covey and the principles that come through Stephen Covey. And and again, I'm kind of going to relate this back because actually a number of the principles that come from Stephen Covey come out of the it is true it is true yeah. it is true it yeah. is true. word it's powerful it's powerful it's powerful mm-hmm. now look as we as we're going to close off uh, just saying what does living like a champion mean to you it means that i'm living my values it means that i am connected with lots of different people that i'm connected to the source it means that i have residual income that i that actually my day-to-day life is not based on work but actually based on things that i love to do and the connection wow. that i love to make i love that i think that's so powerful i love that i absolutely love that wow Gosh, guys, you heard it here first. Um, just saying, how can people get in touch with you? They, they want to send you a message. Uh, they want to reach out to you because they need support. They really need to find out who they are. They need to be in a place whereby they need, they need to understand just what they bring to the world. And they need, again, to acknowledge their brilliance and fulfill their dreams. How can they get in touch with you? If you go to my website, jacinthivy.com, Please take my free assessment and I will respond. You can book a 15 minute discovery call with myself. Download the ebook from the website. Also, you can join my Facebook group, Acknowledge Your Brilliance. That's on Facebook. And join my membership group. Wonderful. So you've got a lot there to, to sink your teeth in. I think some of the things that I took away from this interview is being able to pick yourself back up, which is really crucial when you are doing anything. Um, just understanding who you are. Most people don't even know who they are, or what they even stand for. Um, and, 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 and sort of being valued, understanding your value. And the ultimate is to acknowledge your brilliance, just who you are in the scheme of things just saying thank you so much for this interview i am so delighted you came to join us uh guys don't forget go to justintivy.com you can get her ebook a couple of chapters free today you can also visit her resources page and you'll see a lot more there as well don't forget to join the facebook group acknowledge of brilliance like the opportunities are all there for you as well to connect with jacint uh, and then yeah just send her a message justintivy.com send her a message. I'll put this in the information as well so you have it. Um, so yeah, this is Kamali to hear from the Kamali to podcast saying, look, get it done, get to work. This is your opportunity for success. You've got one chance at life. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. This is your chance to truly live like a champion. Uh, I'll see you soon. And as always, you know, I will see you at the top.